Hi, I'm Kerry Ressler. I'm a professor at Emory University and York Hughes National Research Center and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. How do memories form? So that's what we're interested in. And we know that a huge number of genes and proteins are involved in new memory formation, and we're trying to get at the, at the basis of that. And we think that one of the most powerful ways to study memory formation is through the process of fear memory formation. And fear memories are also very clinically important because they underlie disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder and panic disorder and phobias, et cetera. The reason we can study fear so well is because there's a classic brain region called the amygdala that's conserved from the, from the most early mammals like mice to humans. And what the amygdala does, we know now through decades of work by many in the field, is it has hardwired neural connections to multiple subcortical and, and brainstem areas that lead to the hardwired fear reflex of rapid breathing, sweating, increased heart rate, and in some cases, processes like freezing. And so in the video, what we can see is two mice. The one on the right was trained to be afraid and will show a normal classic freezing response when a tone is played that he was previously um, paired with a mild foot shock. And whether we test this animal a day or a week or a month later, he shows this freezing response. In contrast, the animal on the left continues to move and explore during the tone because he was manipulated in a way to not be afraid. However, when the tone comes off, you'll notice that the one on the right, again, resumes normal exploratory behavior. So it was just that cue-specific freezing that we're measuring. Together, using the tools of Pacific brain brain regions, specific quantifiable behavioral assays, and molecular and genetic modern tools, we can start to understand the pathways and molecules involved in fear memory formation, hopefully leading to future new treatments and interventions. Hi, I'm Brian Dias. I am a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Kerry Russell's laboratory at Emory University and the Yerkes National Primate Research Center. Our publication in Neuron shows that a specific microRNA in the mouse brain, in the amygdala specifically, called microRNA34A, targets a developmental signaling pathway called the Notch pathway. And this interaction between microRNA34A and the Notch pathway is crucial to the consolidation or formation of fear memories that Dr. Ressler previously talked about. MicroRNAs themselves do not code for any proteins, and so they're called non-coding RNAs but they're extremely critical to regulating gene and protein expression. So with this project, we set out to understand, are any microRNAs regulated in the amygdala during the time that fear memories are formed? And does this allow for consolidation to occur? And if microRNAs like these are upregulated, what might targets of those microRNAs be? To do this, we used an unbiased array-based approach wherein we found that microRNA34A is significantly upregulated, or levels of this microRNA are increased in the amygdala during the time in which consolidation of memories are occurring. To further understand whether microRNA34A was involved in the consolidation of memory, we infused into the amygdala of mice viral constructs which allow us to sponge or mop up the microRNA which 34A, which is present in that region. So shown here on the slide, we infused into the amygdala viruses that are co-expressing a red marker. And what we find when we inhibit microRNA34A action, animals are forming the memory just fine in terms of learning, as shown on the left-hand side of this graph, they're learning to associate the tone with the foot shock. But now, when they're tested 24 hours later and the tone presented again, the animals do not freeze as much, suggesting that memory consolidation is impaired when microRNA34A action is inhibited. So Brian and his team of collaborators, which included a number of undergraduates and postdocs in the lab as well, had shown that microRNA34A was critically involved in fear conditioning. But how could we know for sure what pathway that was exactly regulating. It turns out that microRNAs can regulate a number of different gene pathways. So we first said which pathways bioinformatically are most likely to be associated. And then we said from other regions, why might they be important? And it turned out the NOT pathway was met multiple criteria. One, four members of the NOT pathway, both the receptors and two ligands, were all targeted by 34A. And very interestingly, it also intersected with an ongoing hypothesis in the lab of the role of developmental molecules in learning and memory in a 
adults. Specifically, a former graduate student, Kim Magushek, in the lab had shown that the Wnt beta catenin pathway, which was also canonically involved in development and developmental processes, was also reactivated during synaptic plasticity of learning and memory. And together, these data suggest that developmental dynamic pathways that might be quiescent during adulthood get transiently reactivated for new memory formation to occur. But what sorts of additional experiments might Brian need to do for us to be sure that the notch pathway was involved critically in fear learning? As shown in this slide, when we decrease notch signaling using manipulations that are shown in yellow, we are able to facilitate or enhance fear memory consolidation. But when we increase notch signaling using manipulations that are in green on this slide, we suppress the consolidation of fear memory. And then combining manipulations of both microRNA34A and NOT signaling within the same animal, we're able to show that a decrease in NOT signaling in the amygdala mediated by microRNA34A allows for the consolidation of fear memories. Now these results are important for two reasons. First, they add to a growing body of evidence which suggests that molecules typically thought to be involved in development are now used by the adult nervous system for really important behaviors like consolidating fear memory. And secondly, and more important, with existing cancer therapeutics targeting a lot of notch function, one could envision a scenario wherein drugs that target the notch signaling pathway to treat cancer and are well tolerated by humans could then be co-opted to treat neuropsychiatric disorders that might stem from having memories being overly consolidated.